Hello and welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock. We've got all of the latest headlines in mixed martial arts to get you up to date. Today, John Ramdean, Robin Black, and I will be chatting about the UFC's big announcement coming later this month. What is the status of Kalindra Faria for next weekend's World Series of Fighting Card? And Anthony Johnson's UFC suspension has been lifted. UFC President Dana White announced on Thursday that Anthony Johnson's civil case has been dismissed and as a result his suspension has been lifted by the organization. Johnson was suspended temporarily until the UFC could learn more in regards to a number of alleged domestic violence incidents involving the light heavyweight. A woman believed to be the mother of two of Johnson's children dismissed an order of protection this week in a Florida court with Johnson's side arguing that he did nothing wrong. Next weekend's World Series of Fighting Card in Tampa is set to feature three title fights, including strawweight champion Jessica Aguilar defending her title against Kalindra Faria. There has been a dispute from the XFC organization that Faria cannot legally fight for the promotion because she is under a deal to the XFC. I spoke to World Series of Fighting President Ray Seffel regarding Faria's status for next weekend's show. Well, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, right now, she is still fighting. We're just waiting for some sort of confirmation from her management team and also from the original people that she was contracted with and to, to get some sort of confirmation whether this is a, a go or not. Because when originally when Ali actually reached out to Calandra's uh, management team, they said that she was a free agent, that she wasn't on the contract and so on. And um, that's not the story that uh, we're hearing from, you know, from the XFC uh, group. So. Uh, right now, we're just waiting to hear the final decision of that, and then we'll uh, attend to it and see, see what uh, needs to be done. And the UFC will hold a major press conference on Monday, November the 17th. In addition to a special announcement that they are teasing, they will also unveil all of their events for 2015 on their various platforms, including their pay-per-view schedule for the year. In 2014, the UFC will hold a total of 46 cards spread out on pay-per-view television and their digital service, Fight Pass. We're here with John Ramdean and Robin Black to chat about today's news. We start off with Anthony Johnson, who is now back into the UFC light heavyweight mix. The case has just been dismissed, and I don't know about you guys. To me, didn't we just do this a month ago with Tiago Silva? I Hey, I hope everything works out fine, but I think you're a fool to think that this is just going to be open and shut. I mean, there were just all these incidents coming forward, not just one. And now all of a sudden, oh, it's dismissed, back to normal. Yeah, I, I can't really comment because I don't know the details. You know, Anthony Johnson and his family, they were involved in this stuff. It's just good from, from a fan's perspective to the idea that Anthony Johnson's going to get back into, into the cage because I think this guy is one of the most exciting 205-pound fighters on the UFC's roster. And you think of all the different matchups that Anthony Johnson can have at light heavyweight, you know, sign me up. Yeah, I don't know uh, if people outside of Canada know, but up here we're dealing with a a celebrity issue where there's a television celebrity who has been accused of assaulting like nine or ten women. And it came out at the beginning, he's like, well, it was an ex-girlfriend and, you know, it was just kind of an odd scenario. And seven, eight, nine women later, we're all kind of like, oh man, this, this guy's a, this is, this is bad. This doesn't seem to be that case. This is an issue of, you know... A, a, it was multiple people, and I'm not, I'm not alleging anything here. I'm just saying that you can't just simply dismiss the fact this case is dismissed and this story yeah. completely disappears because we, we saw the exact same thing with Tiago Silva. Yeah. Not enough evidence, and then all these videos came out it's, afterwards. It's a strange thing because we sort of try to avoid this maybe more than some outlets, some of these... Uh, topics and issues because we talk about fighting I think a lot more than a lot of the other places do but you know you can't ever ignore anything that and we're seeing this up here in Canada now because there's a lot of dialogue about this because of that celebrity Gian Gameshi's issue and uh, people you can't just ignore when somebody accuses somebody of something and you hear people say oh I'll well, put it before the courts well you're allowed to have an opinion you're allowed to have a way to view it you're allowed to discuss it before it goes to the courts. But by all accounts, this is a great dude who has no history before and, and accusations that have been withdrawn. So the UFC seems like very safe in doing this because again, later they can always go, well, we were wrong. 
we were wrong. This, this wasn't a good person. Right now, it seems he's been cleared and everything's all right. And like you said, that's great news from a fan of an athlete point mm -hmm. of view because this guy's a great performer. You look ahead to January, they are returning to Sweden. It looks like Matt Brown, Tarek Safadine is going to land on that card. Super cool. If Alexander Gustafsson is ready for that card, it seems to make all the sense in the world. You do Alexander Gustafsson and Anthony Johnson. Oh, yeah. And that was originally targeted for January 3rd. Could, it's a, it, it is a quick turnaround, but you do have January 24th, to me, makes all that sense in the world. Yeah, and that fight, that makes perfect yeah, sense. You're talking about top level guys we know that anthony johnson's eventually going to be challenging for the light heavyweight title there's that great storyline with alexander gustafson and john jones but you know you run the risk of having anthony johnson leapfrog alexander gustafson if you put that fight together and i think it probably makes more sense from a business standpoint to give alexander gustafson somebody he can almost guarantee be guaranteed to beat but again it's MMA, there are no guarantee yeah it's one or the other though because you can uh you beat gustafson in sweden that's a star making uh, yeah. performance anyway. Anyway, so now you have a different star to go fight your your uh, champion. But uh, hey, that's two. If that happens, that's two great fights on a card. There's a lot of complaints going around that only the the main event these days is gets something yeah, yeah gets people attention. We watch them all, and you see if you if this is your thing, you're seeing young guys develop. Some drop off, some come up. You're seeing the sport change. A lot of reasons to watch the undercard, but we have become pretty spoiled over the years. In boxing, people are like, ah, oh, I gotta see uh, Canelo versus Mayweather, and and I guess there's some other fights we'll just drink <laughs> during that and, and discuss so uh, other sports have that but we got spoiled and we expect more okay let's quickly chat about Jessica Aguilar maybe the forgotten straw weight as there's so much focus on the straw weights right now she signed with World Series of Fighting about a week before the UFC announced the creation of this yeah. division now I have heard she has paid pretty well in World Series of Fighting and is making uh, she has a good contract there but now we look ahead she's supposed to be defending her title next weekend her opponent Kalindra Faria allegedly has a two-year deal exclusively with the XFC out of Florida. We don't even know if she's going to be able to fight on this card next weekend. If you're Jessica Aguilar right now, are you really just sitting back wondering, man, what is going on here? I don't know who I'm even fighting next Saturday That's night. You yeah. And you're watching the strawweights get all of this attention on the Ultimate Fighter right it, now. There's a trade-off. Yeah, it's true. But, I mean, this is the World Series of Fightings. This is their responsibility. Nobody is saying, oh, I've got to see Aguilar versus Feria. Aguilar is the champion. All you have to do is find somebody that's willing to face uh, Jessica Aguilar. And w when there was all these issues about contract, they, the organization should have gone out and said, okay, these are your options. If this girl falls out, you might be fighting her, you might be fighting her. And it really doesn't matter because the, you, you look at the main event and co-main event, that's what's selling this car. Yeah, it kind of sucks for her. But it's one of those things. World Series of Fighting is a grassroots organization, which is awesome. But they kind of act like they're an enormous organization, maybe because they have a TV deal. As a result, you got way too many fighters, you can't set up fights, you put on too many cards. They're, they're having growing pains. He is Robin Black, John Ramdeen. I'm John Pollock. Thank you for tuning in. As always, we'll chat with you next week.